Hi, I'm Zach and this is View It. Welcome to our little sit down here. I have with me three I'm more guests that can introduce themselves. Yeah, how you doing? My name is Steve, also known as Mac. Here with Mac Nerd and the crew, where we do blockchain security. We're the hackers, but the good guys. We love helping people out. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Vic from La Rancha Digital. We create boutique, short form content for fintech leaders. And I'm here to talk about how to reach millions of people through short form video content. My name is Jason Aptekar. I'm with a company called The Mithril Cloud. We're strategic partners with Mac and MacGyver Tech. We do cybersecurity infrastructure um, and managed services. And we're here to talk about like beyond the blockchain and uh, what the world is that that's encompassing and what the security is that's outside of it that you need to keep in mind. So why is it important not to get hacked? I'm actually... So yeah, I mean, just say anybody, I've been in blockchain for 10 years. I started as a miner facilitating layer ones and really fell in love with the technology and how it can really change humanity. And boy, I tell you, in the 10 years, I've seen such an amazing change in everything. It's really cool stuff. So I'm excited to be here. Um, I'll be talking how to not get hacked on the blockchain, how to avoid all the bad things that most people don't realize. So hope I can help out and educate. Uh, now, just just out of curiosity, with things like the Solana hack and you know, like the there wasn't there there was a big Ethereum hack too. Is that stuff like being remedied? And I know that I know that Ethereum released a patch, and I'm sure Solana did too, though they got their money back somehow right. from like an investor or something, which people were kind of sketched out by. But I'm just curious, like, what do you think about the future for the blockchain? How hackable is the blockchain? Well, ironically, the hacks, the hacks on the blockchain, nine times out of ten, are not on the blockchain. Usually, the blockchain is pretty secure. It's the perimeters, the edges, the dApps, the bridges, anything that's usually on the that can be more compromised, more web two ish technology. The blockchains themselves are inherently an encrypted network, so they're really secure usually. Things like the Ethereum hack, yeah, I mean, there's actually um, a couple services you can use if you build them in your smart contract and a malicious stuff does happen, they can actually reverse the financial transactions on. Um, it's a cat and mouse game in the cybersecurity world, which I'm in, and I'm also in the software world and blockchain. Um, the cyber criminals are really sophisticated. It is no longer something where you have like somebody sitting in a basement eating potato chips and playing video games at, you know, in their mom's house. These are a thousand people working for a state-sponsored government that are trying to take down targets and, and working as a unit. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible to fight them if you're going against them. What you want to do is if you want to avoid them being a hard target, just set your security up in layers. Like, don't do things like, hey, I have a MetaMask wallet and here's all my NFTs and by the way, I'm going to go and buy these high-risk things. You attach to a Melissa Smart contract, next thing you know, everything in your wallet's drained. So so that's something that happens a lot, unfortunately, because there's these clone and hack sites that you know, there's soon as there's ability to make money in human history, as long as we can remember scams and hacks and fraud have been happening. So it's just try to be vigilant and protect people. Huh. Does that make sense? Yeah, I that makes sense. Basically, basically other programmers that are not the best put us in danger or take or you know can potentially take away our assets just due to the I mean, MetaMask basically has a zero trust system once you well, put in your master password. Yes You do and have no. to confirm. Depends, but. you know, like even MetaMask, the company that's working on MetaMask now is tracking all transactions on Ethereum network. When you go through those R certain RPC connections, which is set by default, you want to change the ones that aren't tracking you. Know, I, I kind of avoid this tracking. And everything, everybody gets tracked these days for everything. Even things like iCloud. I, we do digital forensics and protect people from lately who've been hacked. And nine times out of ten, it's their iCloud get it's a hack. They take pictures of their private keys. All they have to do is hack the iCloud and they got control to control your life and everything. Yeah. I always felt like I was it's under so the easy. impression that iCloud was like one of the most secure. Absolutely not. Well, no? Exactly. I avoid that, that like the plague. What struggling with here is the bad actors, they're not going after the hard targets, okay? They're not going after the blockchain piece. They're not going after the network that was designed with zero trust in mind. Yeah. What they're going to look for are the soft targets or the edges of things or where people are, you know, making decisions and they're going to try to use social engineering 
to influence those decisions. So they're going to look at technology that's new, maybe not as developed, and they're going to look at the pieces of the infrastructure, the pieces of the whole puzzle that weren't designed with that level of awareness and security in mind. And remember, all this blockchain stuff that we're doing, all the communications, it sits in a greater internet, a greater network, and it's interacted with by human beings ultimately. And so they're not going after that hard target all the time. And so you know, you can say, oh, well, I'm using the most secure X, Y, Z. Great, but what are you doing outside of that That's to fair, protect yeah. your information? And what habits do you have? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of like two-factor authentication. You know, like it's amazing. Except the moment you lose the master password for your two-factor authentication, now all of it's pointless. Yeah. Right. And if, if you idea. use like a, if you use one of the other two-factor authentications, you transfer your phone. Next thing you know. But we're getting a little bit off topic. Um, <laughs> now I do have a question for you guys. What do you guys see in the gaming industry for blockchain? Because my personal opinion, I think that if you emulate, like I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Counter-Strike global offensive market on Steam, but basically it's like just a community market, like an auction, right? And I think personally that that's where NFTs would shine, is essentially just plopping it in there and replacing it, yeah. and then just having a one-to-one -one currency conversion, but that's just my personal opinion, and I've heard mixed thoughts on that. So what do you guys think? So, it's funny because there's rumors right now that GTA 6 will have NFT integration. And there's already, if you, if you know a lot about like GTA 5 culture, they have these servers where people basically like live lives in GTA, have a job, they're dealing with all these different people. It's crazy, these modded servers. Um, I think it's called GTA RP, role playing. And to see that potentially coming out from the developer where you know, you're going to be able to own a house and own it, own a car and own it, own currency and own it, hopefully that comes out because that would potentially be the biggest game to ever be released, having NFT technology built into it is kind of mind-blowing to think about, and the potential uh, repercussions in a positive sense, what that would do to our industry, right? How impactful that would be for what everyone's been talking about for a few years. Obviously, like the metaverse narrative was insane in 2021. That's what Friggin drove the Facebook couldn't even build something that looked as good as like a 2008 PlayStation exactly. Home. And people really took it, and they're doing the same thing with AI right now. Like they're taking it and they're blowing it out of proportion, and they're saying like, oh, like AI is going to literally like you won't even have to think like it'll do all this stuff and it just it's not going to be like that the metaverse was the same thing where people were like you're going to live in this virtual world and you'll never even have to be a human being again it's not it's not going to be like that it's going to be more of an integrated an integrated puzzle of different technologies and to see nfts coming into gaming i think uh if, if gta 6 does it that's going to be a nail in the coffin it's going to be crazy every other every other game is going to follow after that yeah, I mean, I think, honestly, we've been used to video games had monetary systems for a long time. I'm a big video gamer. I started back with Atari, and I don't I don't just play these games. I'm an ethical hacker, so I've been taking apart everything in 40 Warriors my whole life. So, like, even, like, one of my favorite games of all time is Zelda, and that monetary game. And my biggest problem was it was on an 8-bit system, so the max number of coins you can get is 254. That's because of 0 plus 255. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was always just fascinated. I was like, how can I hack this, make this more? Because I was like, man, that's the limit they can have you. So I was always like... Take trying to compromise these financial systems as games, but really they're, they were just the first evolution of what crypto and blockchain is. So it's kind of funny how we're going full circle, where really it's magic internet money anyway. So in some senses, it's kind of like it's made for video games, and it's like it's a natural segue and actually democratization of that entire ecosystem because they know they have you can buy a lot of stuff, but really it's ran by. And you're the big video game people. It's not ran by the community, which I think is a paradigm shift, which they're probably not happy about and probably pushed against for a long time because it's actually financial loss for them, they see it. They want to make money and be the middleman, which honestly, why I'm a big fan of blockchain is because it kind of breaks that middleman economy up and starts putting the hands of the power of the people as opposed to the power of a few. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the only thing that I've seen a lot of that my main concern is, is that most people that I talk to that play video games, and, and they're not you know heavily involved in blockchain or anything like sure. that, but there are so many gamers that I've talked to that are very much like, if you touch my game with NFTs, I won't touch it with a thousand foot pole. And yeah. I mean, there's good, there's, there's good reason for that too, because there were so many 
hoax games like Axie Infinity oh, and, and all the other ones that have come out that are basically just like, hey, give us $800 to play, and then it costs $200 to transfer off our blockchain. Yeah. Right. But and it was meant to incentivize them to make profit, which wasn't that it was that used right. I yeah. personally, that's why I really think that when somebody integrates it without it being the main feature, just being something that it exists. It doesn't have to be called NFTs. Right. It's just the core. Nobody says, oh, this is powered on electricity. Oh, this is powered on Python. <laughs> oh, this is powered on Java. That's like the same thing people are saying. Yeah. So I think it's people are trying to put the name ahead of what it is. It's just a technology for decentralization and fairness. In, in a way that we've never seen before. And that's why I've been involved in as a miner for 10 years. And the first time I got involved, and my partner and my friend said, hey, you're trying to just ban Bitcoin for the first time. You want to get in? I was like, you're absolutely crazy. So then I looked at the stuff and bought one of the miners at premium on eBay. It's like, oh, this is doable. Next thing you know, but hundreds of thousands of dollars buying mining uh, devices and brought them over here. And I didn't just bring them over here. I hacked each device. And I brought them from 10 volts to 14 volts, but I got another 20 to 30% yield out of each machine by doing that but I'm just I void warranties my whole life so I'm very comfortable with that I might scare some people but I find a lot of companies nerf products because of financial reasons or whatever reasons I hate unlocked devices so I always try to unlock whatever it is to get the maximum potential I did that with my iPhone I jailbroke it like three iOS's ago and now I'm still banned on Zelle but um, I did want oh, to I come back. That. You know, I, I'm, I'm loving this conversation, and I, I, I like tend to take the, the technical stuff and understand how it works underneath. But then draw some dotted lines to social activity and business and people yeah. and culture. And right, what I'm hearing a lot of in all of these are some people are designing some systems and then they're adding some elements to it. But when you let humanity in, when you let the public in, when you let people in, you don't really know where they're going to go with it and how they're going to push on it and what's going to change, which features and elements are going to be, you know, exploited and which are going to be used. And I think adding NFTs to this is like, some people have big ideas about it and some people are like, what's the big deal? It's no big deal. It's, it's another also, element. I think for my generation, at least, we've had, you know, a lifetime of fighting for resources so far. So it's like, I go to games to get away from that kind of thing. <laughs> I don't go to games for yeah. some dude with you know a rich dad to just buy all the property in GTA and then I'm like What's the point? yeah like what well, then you're but, playing the same game right it's just, just it's just the yes. it's second the life same, the same hierarchy <laughs> of everything and everything yeah. like what's the point yeah I also did want to mention too I know you said that um, about AI I actually use AI I develop with it um, so you know, I, I, I haven't actually had a chance yet to build my own models. GPUs are very hard to come by right now. I bought five or six hundred of those in the last few years. Yeah, see, I want. I need <laughs> I forty. Bought, I you actually need forty nineties. So, so I, I can get you. So I can build you a forty ninety eight array, eight machines, one array, uh, eight of them running on one motherboard. I would probably be thirty. Okay, I need to. I need to text you. I, build, um, I, share, I can show you the ones I've already yeah. built. And I share them on TikTok. But um, I have been using it. Like I use it in. Uh, so I use OpenAI, Claude. Um, Llama, like I have so run we, some I inference models. Llama and I had stood it up on mine. I yep. that. And that open source community is actually driving all AI Oh, I know. Meta, so, Meta, Meta I, is, I don't know I if love, they I leaked it. Because I love the fact that they allowed it to be leaked within 24 hours of being leaked. Leaked, though? Leaked? Like, because like the reality <laughs> is, ever since open source got a hold of it. Like, and open source is what this is. And that's it's what the even way. drives. I mean, I come from the open source world and yeah. technology. And what open source people like, oh, it's free software. No, that's not the point. It's democratization and hey here's the open book and how I did it please find problems and we have closed software like Microsoft and other companies they kind of hide things there could be vulnerabilities but if it's open to the world that's going to provide a better product in the long term and that's where honestly Bitcoin and blockchain came from is the open source community it's here free to use it just make it what you want and that's actually always builds a better product yeah I think uh, what, what I will about, say what you say about AI AI is the same thing, and they're starting to now, so the Llama project was a, basically a GPT-4 level AI that basically Facebook made, and it was leaked that, yeah, well, that, and that basically is now leading innovation in the AI space, so the innovation is going like a hockey puck. Sort of. So, 
I will say there are certain models like Claude. I don't know if you guys have heard I, of Anthropic Claude. I, I literally went to a hackathon in San Francisco last month just to get API access to it. So nice. there's this thing called context length, which is like how much they can remember, right. how many tokens. Yeah. So like I haven't even been able to get access to the GPT-4 32K, okay, yeah. but I went to Anthropic's hackathon because it's a 100K context. Okay. And so now with, with Anthropic, uh, my own code servers and like all my own APIs and stuff with Python and such, and then web development, I there's literally nothing. As long as I can turn it into a text-based form, there's nothing that I can't do. Even I'm making an AI that teaches itself how to play Pokemon. And that AI, I'm using a Lua bridge and then just turning it into uh, text to actually use AI to play. Okay. Hi. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll jump in. Sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll just, I'll jump into that, yeah. You got so, it. Okay. So I was just on TikTok on the way here in my Uber, and I guess it's being, like, shunned out of the news. No one's, no one's pushing it on the news, but MGM brand is under a massive cyber attack. A lot of employees are like leaking information saying how their bank accounts and credit cards were hacked, how they can't, working from home access is hacked. I've seen footage of all the digital slot machines down, all the kiosks down, rooms with remote control lighting and, and curtains, everything's on and open, there's no control. Anything digital at MGM Grand right now, literally 10 minutes away from here, is completely uh, on lockdown. And apparently, they paid the hackers off. So I don't know the situation. So they got ransomware. Yeah. So, so I deal with these. How does this? How does this happen? Oh, what? I know. What? Um. So what type of infrastructure do you have to have in order yeah. for like some one, one get in one way and take over everything? So they had essentialized servers that basically controlled a lot of stuff. So as soon as somebody got domain administrative access to one of those servers, they can run them up. So they have basically domain control of anything they want. They probably, it's a really nice thing sometimes to be centralized and have all this stuff controlled in one place, but it's also for a hacker's gold mine. And they're going, what they're doing is social profile on somebody in the company, somebody probably clicked on a link that they shouldn't have, Next thing they know, we've gotten that person to hop to whatever they needed to do. They get to the administrative access. Once they got that, game over. I mean, now they probably have 10 backdoors in every th single system. They're going to have to flush everything from scratch. It's well, going to take them a month. Listen, listen do to you what think you're talking about. You're not talking about them attacking the core systems, it's right? Denial That's what I was saying before. For the entire but company. they're using some level of social engineering because the human is the weakest link. The and they're getting a problem. person, convincing a person, or just asking them to do something, and they do it. But the repercussions of that act they don't understand and then they're taking advantage of that that gives them access to a system that they understand and then they're leveraging and using parts of that system in ways that it wasn't intended but people maybe didn't test didn't check out don't understand that it can be done that way and once they're in they're as Max said leaving back doors finding other ways to do it but you know most hackers are in a system days weeks months years before you know about it because it's not in their interest to be destructive unless they're gonna get something out of it it's in their interest to sit there watch gather information and then use that information to their own gain. And so this actually indicates that there's other things going on, not just a social engineering hack that took down a business. Maybe to make a point, right? I, I mean, I think personally, wow. uh, you know, you said what kind of organizational structure or infrastructure like sets that up. It's really, I think, a lack of infrastructure and organizational structure that sets that up. Because wow. either A, it's a very orchestrated attack. They know all of MGM systems. They manage to like hack their way into every single one past the initial one. Or B, they just got lucky. Everything was wide yeah, open. No, so again, no. yeah. this is a state-sponsored attack. So some of our adversaries were already at World War III online. We're part of an organization called the FBI InfoGuard. We work directly with law enforcement, and we get feeds of information more than what, like what you see in the news is less than one percent what's going on, and it's really escalated. And they're doing, they're trying to compromise American companies and call it suffering in this country any way, shape, or necessary. So that sounds like a denial of service attack, not just for the websites, for the entire company.
and I guarantee it's a Windows network, and Windows is really easy to compromise. Well, there's so, another element to this, too. In order for them to take over all those systems all at once like that, they, I, I, they, I agree, I don't think that there was luck involved. I think that somebody was sitting in those systems for a while, mapping them out, learning it, planning it, because for everything to happen all at once, there's timing involved, there's other things, right? They basically hit everything at once. Yeah, and so wow. you use the weakest link to get in. Once you're in, you do your reconnaissance. Once your reconnaissance is done and you've found the vulnerabilities and you've decided what you want to do, where are the weak parts, that's when you set everything up and you go. Yes, absolutely. That was crazy what you said about it's big the hackers being in already. Oh yeah. And mapping it out and not doing it. That blew my mind, man. They're that was crazy. They go on this. vacation. They're waiting for like literally I'm there with an explosives company. The girl they want broke the right her time. Foot. And it, 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 early on, no, early on, we saw a lot of destructive hackers, right? What are they doing? They were like the I love you virus, all this crap from the late 90s into but the 2000s. there's no money to be made on that. No, they, they're there's not making their point. There's more money this way by extorting you or causing wow. you harm or you're going to pay. Because if you're under duress like that, they're like, okay, give me $5 million to fix it. Or if they're losing $5 million a well, day, it's a no-brainer. Are you dealing company. with somebody who wants to make a point, a script kitty who's having fun, or a real organized organization that has a mission? You don't even know that right away. You got to figure that out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be pretty exciting to see it unfold. Um, that is our time for today, guys. I think so. Uh, I'm Zach. This is View It. Thanks for thanks everybody for joining us. Yeah, thank Have you a very wonderful thanks night. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, wait.